What's up guys? Uh, today I'm gonna walk you through the process of replacing the battery in your Fitbit Blaze. Uh, my battery has been deteriorating for a while to the point where it doesn't even hold charge for a full day anymore. Uh, and if I actually start charging it, uh, you'll see that it's gonna start charging up just fine. But then after a while there's this symbol that shows up saying that the device is overheating uh, the charging just stops and it gets warm to the touch. Uh, so I decided to replace my battery, hopefully to increase the battery life and to also get rid of the problem with the overheating. As you can see at this point, it seems to be charging just fine, uh, but then let's just wait a bit and see if the symbol shows up. Alright, there we go. I'll probably speed this up in editing because it took a few minutes to get to this point, but when this symbol shows up, uh, the Fitbit stops charging and it's super hot at this point. Uh, so it's totally malfunctioning and overheating. So let's take it out of the charger and let's see how we can replace the battery. Alright, so the first thing we need to do, we need to unscrew the four screws found at the corners of the Fitbit over here. Um, and the kit I bought included all of this alongside with the battery, so all the uh, screwdrivers and, and bits and pieces needed to actually disassemble the Fitbit are included uh, but if you don't uh, buy a kit that has all this uh, well, I found that these are the bits that work for this case so a Torx T3 screwdriver or a screwdriver bit in this case and then a Phillips triple uh, zero uh, they will uh, basically need the screwdrivers that you need to unlock the Fitbit or unscrew the Fitbit um, I'll link a, a kit in the description of the video that includes the battery and uh, all these extra screwdrivers and bits needed if you guys want to purchase that. And that's going to be through my referral links, so you're helping out the channel if you buy it through there. Uh, so this is the battery that we'll be using and then these are the bits. Alright, so uh, you first have to use the T3, the Torx screwdriver. Uh, to unlock the or unscrew the four corners of the Fitbit. So let's do that first. And uh, when you're unscrewing these, be super careful because they're super tiny and can strip easily. So be gentle with them. My camera is set up super close to the table, so I have to move it out of the way so that I can unscrew it. All right, so uh, as soon as you unscrew those, uh, you'll need to pop off the back piece of the Fitbit uh, from the front. And because I've already done this in preparation for this video, it easily just popped off. If it doesn't, you actually might need to use something like an X-Acto knife uh, and just slide it in uh, over here. So where the front side of the Fitbit and the back meet. So right over there, so just slide it in and just kind of wiggle it a little bit until it uh, kind of starts separating like this. Uh, the first time I opened it up, it needed a little bit of separation. Uh, obviously, the second time around, it went much smoother. Uh, don't use too much force, though, because uh, you'll see there's a ribbon cable in here. And if you just pop it off like super fast, you might break that ribbon cable. And obviously, we don't want that. So uh, let's say you, you popped off the back from the front. Now, if you start slowly opening it up you'll see there's the little ribbon cable I was referring to so you can potentially take that ribbon cable out but you don't necessarily need to because we can actually work on it with that ribbon cable connected so I'm just gonna leave it on for now uh, anyway so at this point uh, there's three more screws you need to remove to remove the Fitbit motherboard uh, and also you have to remove uh, a couple of connectors from over here so let's start by uh, removing the connectors first and then we'll remove the screws. So the connectors I'm referring to are, uh, let me use my screwdriver to show you guys, uh, this one right here, this one, and then this one. Uh, and these connectors just kind of uh, push on, so you just kind of have to pull them upwards to remove them. So I'm just using my fingernail uh, at this point and they just pop off. You can use something sharp like an X-Acto knife here, or maybe a screwdriver as well. Just get my camera to focus. There we go. One more. 
Okay, so all of those as you can see now, all of those have been disconnected from the from the motherboard. This one here as well. So now you need that uh, Phillips triple zero screwdriver uh, to remove the the three screws that are left. So let me just switch the bit on my uh, screwdriver. So now I'm using the Phillips Phillips tip. Uh, so okay, so now I need to unscrew this screw here. And this screw is super, super tiny. Um, and actually, let me get it in the frame. Uh, and this screw is actually a little bit different than the other two. So uh, remember where you're taking it out of. Uh, this one goes up. Uh, that one goes in the top left. And then the other two uh, go over here and then over here. I don't know if you can see that well enough on camera, but it's right there. There we go. And then the last one is in this corner over here, right below where we took out the connector. There we go. So as I said, these two are actually identical. The, the ones you see at the bottom and this one is a little bit different. So just keep it kind of off to the side. All right. Uh, so once you reach this point, now you have to just uh, remove the motherboard. So if you just kind of peek from the side, and you start kind of pulling it off, off. Don't go too fast though, because there's wires connecting the motherboard to the battery from on the back. So I'm just wiggling it around a little bit. Um, right there, there's a piece that you kind of have to pull out. It's not um, glued or anything, but you have to kind of pull it out. See how it popped up now, right now. Uh, it might actually be the speaker, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, okay, now you can see that this kind of starts falling apart at this point. The ribbon cable is still connected to the motherboard. Uh, the motherboard itself has these wires at the bottom. I don't know if you can see them uh, right there. Those wires are actually connected to the battery. Uh, so those wires will need to desolder and then we will need to solder on the wires for the new battery. But first let's remove the battery. The battery is, uh, uh, there's some double sided tape on the underside of the battery. Uh, the, the battery is right here. So there's some double sided tape at the bottom. So you'll need some sort of a prime tool uh, to actually remove it. And you can use anything, you can use a screwdriver. I'm just going to use this plastic bit that came with my kit. Uh, and you can just stick it in there and just start pulling up a little bit and don't be too aggressive with it just so you don't like start bending the Fitbit potentially damaging the screen or something like that uh, you just kind of have to go underneath and then just push up a little bit until we can unstick it from the housing so the thing you see here that's the double-sided tape that's kind of holding the battery in place although this is all uh, super packed so honestly I don't think that it matters like even if you don't have double-sided tape here the battery won't really go anywhere uh, but okay once you remove uh, remove the battery you can actually uh, put this off to the side because uh, we're gonna be working with this part right here um, so the next step would be to desolder the old battery from these two terminals right there and the positive and the negative um, Hopefully you can see that a bit clearer, these two terminals. Uh, so after you desolder the old battery from those terminals, you have to solder the new one uh, in the exact location. Uh, the important part here is to remember uh, where the red wire is connected and where the black wire is connected uh, so that you don't reverse the polarity on the new battery after you replace it. Uh, so let me get my soldering iron so that I can actually desolder this and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I got my soldering iron and I got a pair of helping hands to see if I can actually hold this a little bit better. Make sure I don't uh, press on anything important on this side. By the corner. There we go. Now we just need to desolder those two leads. And the red one goes on the left and the black one goes to the right. 
All right, let's try desoldering it now. There we go. All right, so this is the old battery and this is the new battery. Uh, now, a slight problem here is that the old battery uh, has a slightly larger capacity than the new one. The old one is uh, 167 milliampere hours and the new one is, I believe, 120. Uh, yeah, 120. Um, so it's not going to last as much as the old one, but in my case, because the old one is totally busted, it's still going to be a bit better. So let's just solder the uh, new one on now. And the first thing I'll do is I'll actually add a bit of solder to the uh, tips of the wires here. They're already uh, they're already exposed. You see, so I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of solder to them. Okay, now let's try soldering it to the motherboard. Okay, now that we soldered the new battery on, uh, it's time to test and see what we did. So now we can begin the assembly process. So let's take the housing again. Uh, this is oriented with the little speaker over here. So it needs to go sort of this way. So I'll just tuck the battery in like so. I'm not going to put new double-sided tape because, as I said, this is really snug in here, so I don't think it's going anywhere. All right, so the battery is in. Oh, actually, I have to orient the battery the other way. So the battery has to be oriented this way so that the wires come out the top. And uh, it's going to be easier to mount that way. There we go. Move the connectors out of the way. Okay, the speaker goes in over there. You might need to push it in a little bit right there and these wires are a bit a bit longer than the previous ones and I didn't want to cut them uh, so you can just kind of tuck them in uh, in here all right there we go so before I actually connect all of these connectors back I'm actually going to put the screws first so that the motherboard is held down and then I can uh, easily connect the connectors. So remember this was the uh, Phillips triple zero screwdriver and keep in mind that the screw that goes over here is the one that was kind of different than the other two uh, so it's a little bit larger uh, so just pay attention to that. And uh, don't over tighten these screws because you might strip them because they're really tiny. All right, so now I just have to connect the connectors back. And these connectors, you just have to kind of line them up and then just push on top of them and you, you'll hear a little click. And that means that they're connected properly. Okay, there we go. So we just need to put the housing back together now and we should be good to go. 
Remember that's just four screws in each corner. And that should be it. And these are the uh, T3 Torx screws. Try not to over tighten these as well because they might strip. And there we go, that should be it. So let's just bring up the charger again and let's see what happens. All right, looks like it's charging. I'll give it a few minutes and I'll let you guys know if everything is working fine. All right, so after some time, it's still charging normally uh, and the overheating icon hasn't showed up. Uh, so I think we're good to go. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this helps someone. Uh, please consider buying your replacement battery through my link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one.